Hi, this is Phil Chandler with another short video from my workshop. As DIY beekeepers, we often need to make a number of items that are exactly the same as each other. The most obvious example of this would be um, hive boxes, whether they're horizontal hive boxes or vertical vari type boxes. They, it's quite important that they all uh, match up with each other and if, especially if they're stacking, things need to stack accurately on top of each other. So one of the ways of doing this, and probably the most common way of doing this amongst um, professional woodworkers, is to make what is called a jig. Uh, and a jig is simply a guide that allows you to um, stand wood upon it while it's being worked, if you like. And uh, because the jig is made with precise dimensions, everything you make on that jig will be exactly the same. So I'm just going to show you how a jig works for a particular type of hive, which I'm going to describe as my versatile vertical hive, which will be the subject of another video. Okay, the last thing you want is a set of boxes that when you put them on top of each other, rock in diagonally from side to side. That's really disastrous. So to avoid that, start off with a really solid working base. And this jig here has a base that's about an inch thick, and it's, it's framed both uh, top and bottom with some solid timber. It's made from seasoned wood. This is also very important. Make sure you make your jigs from wood that isn't going to move around. So this stuff's been in, uh, this, is, this has actually been in somebody else's workshop for about 30 years. So this is well seasoned. This stuff is also well seasoned. It's, it's pr pretty old timber. It's been around in my workshop a long time. And another little trick that might be worth noting is if you put a, if you screw a bolt or piece section on the back like this as a lip, if you like, to go over the edge of your, your bench. When you drive screws in, it's going to the camera so you can when you drive screws in to your box ends, you can rest that lip over the edge of your bench and you can push against it and the thing won't move. If you try to do that on the bench and you're drilling or screwing into the uh, end sections of your hive, if you drive a, push a driver hard, it's going to push the whole thing and then the whole thing is going to wobble and maybe things are going to move apart. So stabilize your jig by having a lip. It might be even better to have a lip just on one side to maintain it flat, but that doesn't matter with this one because it holds the timber quite firmly. So here's my jig for what I call my versatile vertical hive. And as you can see, it comprises a section in the center here which has the precise measurements of the interior of the hive. It doesn't matter what those are right now but let's just assume that they are exactly right. Now the each box of this hive is made up of four sections and I'm going to put them in place like so. Now this section here slots neatly into a, um, a recess that's made exactly to its size and it goes up against an edge end stop here. This one just sits against the interior, um, I'll lay, lay that back so you can see it more easily, sits against this interior measurement and against the end stop. So those two are now in position. The two short sides go in like this, they go against that interior guide there and there. Okay, now because now this is now set up exactly as the box will uh, end up in use, um, all I need to do now is to use the pre-drilled holes. I have actually already drilled holes for the screws in, this, in these end sections. Uh, I can simply apply the glue to these edges here and I can drive screws through into the wood from both sides knowing that as I do so the jig will hold the wood into position and I can make as many of these boxes as I like using the same jig and they will all be absolutely identical assuming, of course, that I've sawn the wood accurately in the first place. Um, one little trick I'd like to show you. Um, when you're driving a screw, this is a long uh, plated screw which is going to go straight through the ends into the, uh, into the end grain of the side sections. If you apply a little grease, this in this case this is Vaseline, this is a petroleum jelly, you can also make this stuff or something very similar to it and, and possibly more bee friendly using a little um, beeswax melted into some linseed oil or another vegetable oil. Anyway, if you coat the screw thread with this stuff and then drive it into the wood, you'll find two things will happen. One, 
the screw will go in really easily and two, it will take a much longer time before it starts to deteriorate inside the wood due to rust. Uh, you can of course use brass screws and I would recommend this if you, if you don't mind spending the money for brass screws uh, or even stainless steel but they're even more expensive. Um, but if you're using ordinary screws just coat them with a, a layer of this uh, petroleum jelly or bee grease as I call it and uh, that will make your life a lot easier when you're assembling. This is the jig that I use for making horizontal top bar hives and what happens here is that the sides of the hive simply sit against these end stops and that gives me the exact dimension uh, for the uh, interior of the hive. Um, here's another example. <coughs> this jig is for the ends of the horizontal top bar hive. I can place this on top of a, uh, an end section which is exactly the dimension of this piece here and I can use these drill holes, I can drill straight through these holes and that gives me the screw holes for fixing the ends to the sides and also the, the bolt holes here and here for fixing the legs and the, as you can see the legs will drop into these guys here so that I can drill the holes through for the legs from the other side and that saves me an awful lot of time when I'm building a horizontal hive, those two things together. <coughs> Going back to this jig now to show you, um, the most important thing I think about jigs and using jigs is to double and triple check all your measurements of the original jig because remember, if you make a mistake building your jig, that mistake is going to be replicated throughout your entire production line of boxes. So be, uh, you know, take a lot of care about setting this jig up to be exactly the right measurements. So double, double check and triple check all your measurements, all your angles, make sure you've got a nice right angle here for example, make sure these are right angles, make sure this dimension is exactly the same as this dimension and so forth, so on there and there. So if you get that right and spend some time on it, uh, you'll be able to make any number of boxes from this jig and they'll all be exactly the same, even if you come back next year and when you've even forgotten the original dimensions of the box you're supposed to be building, this jig will still be here and you'll still be able to use it to do that job. So I hope that was helpful, especially to those of you who aren't experienced woodworkers. I shall be making another video soon about the versatile vertical hive and I hope that will also be interesting for you. So this is Phil Chandler signing off.